Hello folks, welcome to another edition of the Dr. Mark Foster Show. Uh, just as a note, uh, today my uh, cold seems to be doing a lot better, so I shouldn't have to uh, clear my throat as much as I uh, was in the last two broadcasts. I'm sure you'll all be very grateful for that, for anybody who heard me previously. Um, today I'm uh, going to uh, address the issue of how to draw close to the next world. By the next world I mean a concept in, in the Baha'i texts called the Abha Kingdom. Abha is an Arabic word. It is the superlative of the word Baha. Baha has been translated by the guardian of the, ba of the Baha'i faith, Shoghi Effendi, as light, glory, or splendor, most commonly glory. So, um, Abha is the most glorious, the most enlightened, and the most splendorous. It is the world beyond this world, realms upon realms. In an unauthenticated talk, in the book Paris Talks, Abdul Baha referred to the worlds beyond as containing degrees of purity. That is the criterion, primarily, I think, for life in the next world. How much money we have made, what our social standing is in this world, what our connections are, political, business connections, how large of a house, how small of a house, all of those um, temporal concerns, things that occupy so many people, even things like sickness and disease, all of that will be gone. In the next world, we will be the result of all that we had attained to in this world. After that, we are at the mercy of God. And uh, even somebody who has died in a relatively low position can, through God's grace, be raised to a higher plane. Through prayer, a soul in the next world can increase in their level of spiritual development by souls in this world praying for souls in the world to come similarly a soul can progress and develop by performing charitable activities giving gifts on behalf of a departed soul souls can also progress so no one is left into what most people understand to be an eternal hellfire. There certainly is an eternal hellfire, that is the hellfire of separation from God, but that doesn't mean that everyone necessarily remains in it for all eternity. In other words, the condition remains, the hellfire remains, but the souls within it are always at the mercy of God, and to a degree, each of us, even in this world, has a hell. My spiritual mother, Elizabeth Thomas, once, in a conversation with me, referred to hell as the realization that one could have done more in the next world, realizing that, that when still living in this world, that one could have done even more than they did. Um, and that, I think that's, that's true. That is certainly one dimension of what that separation from God is. Uh, separation from God is, in other words, by our choice, and in some cases it is a kind of regret, a bemoaning, that when we look upon our life in this world, on our deeds, when we go through the review, so to speak, of our lives, 
and we find out that we have uh, passed some very important missed opportunities, then in a sense we are experiencing a kind of hellishness. But nobody is permanently in hell. We all have a hell. The hell of separation from God. We also all have a paradise. The paradise of reunion with God. Baha'u'llah wrote that the paradise and hell of existence are in all the worlds of God. So it's not unique to only certain people. Anybody can become quote-unquote saved if God wills it. Certainly if a person starts out on a disadvantaged position, much like somebody who was born into this world with uh, some kind of uh, birth defect, uh, that might be an initial stumbling block, perhaps a divinely ordained stumbling block, something that that person, by, by uh, rising above, will progress spiritually. In other words, things that we may consider to be bad or evil may, from a God's eye viewpoint, actually be advantageous to us. But in the next world, we will be the product of who we are. And as I've realized that, primarily through practicing my meditation, and if you would like to uh, read about that meditation, you can go to heartfulness dot Baha'i Faith dot info. Baha'i Faith is spelled in the domain as one word, B as in boy, A H A I F A I T H. Heartfulness dot Baha'i Faith dot info. I've drawn close to certain souls in the next world. Most of them I've known here, not all of them. In one case, for example, um, Emma Jean Hoag, never met her, but she was the person who inspired Marion Lippitt, whose work has had a tremendous impact on my life. One of my grandparents, my um, paternal grandfather, no, my, sorry, my maternal grandfather, I never met. Um, he died a number of years before I was born. I believe he had a heart attack, but I'm not positive about that. And, um, and yet still, you know, I, I include him and my spiritual family beyond as well. So my personal recommendation for what little it's worth is that it might be a good idea for each one of us to sit down, uh, whether in the traditional sense with a pen and paper, uh, in front of a uh, computer screen or on a tablet computer, and um, reflect on people who have left this world that either you have a direct connection with because you know or because of other circumstances that you simply feel as though you are connected to them for other reasons, uh, like the people I mentioned, um, like my guardian angel, Hadrat Sultan Bahu. Obviously, never met him. He lived in the 17th century in, in the Indian Punjab. But people who, who are very meaningful to you, that you feel feel, not think, but feel, feel a sense of connectedness for one reason or another, my suggestion is put them on that list. In my case, what I've done is I've taken that list and I've actually uh, tacked it onto the wall. Um, that way I can reference it, which I do in my prayers. I can look at their names from time to time, remind myself of who they are, and uh, I pray for them, and I ask them, sometimes as a whole, sometimes individually, to pray for me in certain circumstances. And at least for me, 
uh, that has been a very treasured way in which I have been able to draw close to the spirit of the world to come, of the Abha kingdom, of that realm which is referred to in the, in the book of Psalms in the Old Testament as the divine council, referred to in the Baha'i texts as the supreme concourse, the celestial concourse, or the concourse on high. It's a way of drawing close to those souls, whether departed ordinary humans or prophets, individuals that are, are close to us. So that's my recommendation. Take it for what you like. In future broadcasts, um, I hope to actually be interviewing other people. Uh, I haven't begun that process yet. I need to uh, figure out exactly who I'm going to interview. I have a few names in mind. Um, I'd rather not say who they are right now because if they say no, uh, I don't want to put them in a position of being embarrassed. Uh, I haven't asked anyone yet, but I have a few people that I would like to interview. Most likely I will do it through Skype and record the Skype conversation, uh, either upload it to YouTube or someplace else, and, uh, and proceed along that line. But for now, uh, it'll just be me giving these, uh, these presentations or monologues on various things which, for whatever reason, uh, are important to me in the moment. For now, this is Dr. Mark Foster, signing off. Have a good one.